What connects the Borough Collection in Pollock Park with ancient Egypt and a shipping disaster in the Bay of Biscay? Find out now on this episode of Astonishing Glasgow. It's April 2022 and I've made my way to the world famous Borough Collection in the city's Pollock Park. The museum has just reopened after a £68 million refurbishment. But before we go inside, we need to take a trip. All the way to London's Victoria Embankment and one of the oldest outdoor structures in the UK. This is Cleopatra's Needle, originally erected in Heliopolis around 1450 BC. In 1819, the needle was gifted to Britain by Muhammad Ali Pasha, the Ottoman government of Egypt and a granite obelisk covered in hieroglyphics could be the very definition of a symbolic gesture. But it all caused a bit of a problem. Nothing that heavy had been transported that far, and as it was a gift, it was to be moved at Britain's expense. Until a solution could be found, the needle lay in Alexandria, and by 1867 the owner of the land where it was stored was keen to see it moved. It was proposed to break it up for building materials, so it had to be gone. The cost of the move was eventually covered by James Wilson and was due to take place in October 1877, but due to its weight there was no way to get it on board a transport ship. So a plan was formed to build the Cleopatra, a pontoon ship that would carry the 200 ton needle in a floating capsule that would be towed behind the steamship Olga. The Olga set sail on September the 21st, 1877, but when crossing the Bay of Biscay on the 14th of October, a storm threatened to sink the Cleopatra, and as a crew of six were sent to rescue those on board the Cleopatra, a wave swamped the boat, and all six volunteers were swept to their death. At this point the Cleopatra was cut loose to save the Olga and was left adrift off the coast of France. This is where the connection to the Borough Collection begins. After five days adrift, the Cleopatra was spotted off the northern coast of Spain by the captain of the steamship Fitzmaurice. This ship was owned by Burrell and Sons of Port Dundas, builders of Clyde Puffers, and operators of tramp steamers throughout the world. Burrell and Sons was founded in 1856 by George Burrell, Sir William Burrell the collector's grandfather. A volunteer on board the Fitzmaurice was called for to swim to the Cleopatra with a tow rope, and after two attempts failed, the cargo was finally secured on the third attempt. The needle arrived in London and was assembled right here in September 1878. George Burrell was paid £2,000 for its salvage, which is around £154,000 in today's money, and it was to be shared amongst the Fitzmaurice's crew. The Burrell family was immensely proud of the part they played in saving this monument. The damage you can see on the monument was caused by a German bomb dropped in World War I on the 4th of September 1917. Right, time to go back to Glasgow before I need to change the name of the channel to Astonishing London or remortgage my house to buy lunch. The Borough Collection has stood on this site in its purpose-built museum since 1983. As I said at the start of this video, it has just undergone a five-year renovation and reopened in March 2022. The collection was gifted to the city by Sir William Burrell in 1944, with the stipulation that it never leaves Glasgow and is housed within four miles of Calairn in Stirlingshire and at least 16 miles away from Glasgow's Royal Exchange Square. It proved to be very difficult to find a site that met this criteria and when the Stirling Maxwell family gifted Pollock House and Pollock Park to Glasgow in 1967, negotiations began to house the museum right here. 
Now before we go any further, please help me out by clicking that like button, subscribe for more videos and if you really feel generous, hit that super thanks button below to make a small donation to the channel and help me make more videos. Right, on with the story. Inside the building you'll find over 9,000 objects, from figures of ancient Egypt, fine art from Degas and Cezanne, and of course, there are many tapestries. It was an incredible gift for Glasgow, but it wasn't without sadness for his only daughter, Marion. Marion was born in 1902, and as she grew, she became a strong-willed, spirited young lady who had a testing relationship with her parents, in particular with her mother Constance. Throughout her life, Marion was at odds with her mother's wishes, which led to her life being heavily controlled and the failure of many relationships, including three broken engagements. The fantastic book Collector's Daughter by SMO Stephen, who is goddaughter of Marion Burrell, details her trials and tells how part of the reason Glasgow was gifted the collection was to ensure it didn't pass into Marion's hands or any future husband's ownership. Marion died in 1992. She never inherited a single item from her dad's collection, but a cousin of hers, who was one of the collection's trustees, ensured that she was gifted two fine oak dressers that had been in her bedroom whilst growing up at Hutton Castle, the borough's home near Berwick. However we came to acquire the collection, we should be proud that we did. It is a real asset to the city, and if you haven't made it over yet, it is well worth a visit to the new museum. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you have enjoyed it, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you feel generous, hit the super thanks button to make a small donation. And don't forget that you can get in touch through the comments section or via social media in the links below. Take care, and I will see you next time in Astonishing Glasgow. Right, I'm away for a share but dib-dab and a tizer.